Hey guys, um, some of you would have uh, come across my previous uh, sensorless BLDC motor control video. Um, following that, I've uh, received some requests for code or some sort of a t tutorial. Um, so I thought I'd make this video to explain, um, well, g or give you some of the ideas um, behind um, how to drive a sensorless you know, BLDC motor control. Um, I've tried to organize this video in four sections. So firstly, we'll go through uh, introduction, um, basically introduce to what sort of BLDC motors out there. Uh, there, and then we'll move on to the concept of the control, um, how the, the motor is actually controlled um, electrically. Then we'll have a look at uh, some typical schematic um, that you can use to uh, control such a motor. Finally, we'll uh, also give you some programming hints that you can um, use when you are trying to code up the uh, control for these motors. So let's get on with the introductory part of the video. Um, I guess those who are watching this video, uh, you've all come across some um, RC motors. Uh, a lot of these uh, can be br brushless DC motors. Um, a little bit of uh, familiarization with the motor. You've got the rotor, that's the bit that spins, and the stator, that uh, the bit that uh, is stationary. Now, there are two types of BLDC motors you will see out there. There's one that's outrunner and the inrunner. I suggest you pay attention to these keywords um, uh, because if you want to know more about them, you can just go to Google and type these keywords in and you will come up um, with a lot more reading materials. But generally, um, with the outrunner motor, you have, as the name suggests, the outside bit is the bit that runs uh, or rotates and this the central bit is the bit that um, stays stationary. So for an outrunner motor, the um, central bit is actually connected to the outer case and um, on the center part of it, uh, inside here, you actually have the stator coils. So th these can be uh, three phase or two phase. Typically for RC application, you have um, th three phase or two, two phase motors. Um, but in theory, there's no reason why you can't have more than three phase uh, motors. Uh, on the other hand, for the in runner motor, you have the um, the inside bit that is the bit that um, actually rotates, and the outside bit uh, stays stationary. Therefore, the coils sit on the outside uh, body. Um, they're attached to the outside body. Um, the, the, uh, and, and the magnets are actually attached to the inside, um, the, the rotating shaft. So unlike um, the brushed motors, the cheaper uh, RC toy cars uh, motors that you see, uh, with these ones uh, you can't just apply a voltage, uh, constant vo DC voltage uh, across these pins and expect the motor to run because it won't. Um, because there is no brush uh, contact between the coils um, and the rotating part, you actually got to um, induce uh, a rotating magnetic field so that that magnetic field will in, in turn push these other permanent magnets around the sides uh, um, and, and eventually rotate the, uh, the motor. That's the basic idea behind running a brushless DC motor. Um, Typically, uh, you can you see them being run with uh, a um, trapezoidal shape. So we'll get to that later on. Or you can also run them with um, sinusoidal um, waveform. Um, but uh, th th this video will concern itself with um, three-phase um, trapezoidal running of uh, of a BLDC motor. Um, look at some of the control methods um, as to how to run these motors. Um, you have to keep in mind two main uh, concepts here. Uh, one is the push and I've called it how fast, uh, simply speaking. Th these essentially translate to uh, PWM due to cycle and PWM frequency. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to those in just a moment. Um, so going back to this drawing here, you had the uh, the stator coil and um, the uh, permanent magnets on the outside. We'll, by the way, we'll mainly look at outrunner motors because they're the more common types in RC applications and they're the ones that I have used. So, with these 
coils, um, you're, you basically want to induce um, electric, electromagnetic fields on them, a rotating one, such that um, you have enough of a push in the coil and you pulsate or you rotate the magnetic field with a certain frequency and that frequency will determine your uh, revolutions per minute or revolutions per second uh, for the motor. I guess the simplest way to explain these uh, two concepts is to consider um, a two-phase um, mechanical situation which if all of us uh, have come across you have the bicycle pedal so you have the uh, if you consider this this is your bicycle pedal uh, left foot right foot uh, right left um, so what you're essentially doing when you're riding a bike is you're you're pushing the right foot down and as this one comes up the left foot comes up uh, you then start to well you actually push from this side you then start to push um, the left hand side and push the right hand side so essentially you're applying this push method to keep it rotating but also you're adjusting your other feet um, in the way that it's accepting the following um, uh, pedal uh, as it comes up so you've got to keep track of how fast you're changing your pushes from one leg to the other and that's how you ride a bike and this is really a, a how a two-phase um, BLDC motor would be driven now when you're pedaling a bicycle um, your uh, as you push one feet down the other feet knows um, automatically or rather happening at the back of your head automatically um, it knows the position uh, as the left foot comes up uh, and it knows once it's up then it has to push how do you determine um, that one of these uh, one of these poles have moved forward and the other hasn't um, well um, you basically excite two of these coils uh, two of the three coils and look at the back EMF induced on the third one um, and basically you have um, six different states where you go from one pair to the other pair you excite the other pair and look at the alternate one uh, the BMF induced on the other one uh, go on to the other pair um, and then look at the uh, BMF on the third one so when you are controlling these motors um, whether in sensorless or censored um, method you uh, have uh, two ways to run it you um, you either run them in open loop or you have a closed loop the difference between them is well uh, with the open loop you um, basically run it at fixed push and a fixed um, uh, frequency or speed um, so these two here get fixed uh, when you're running it in open loop um, with the closed loop you uh, you basically have a, you you're really trying to run the motor at a an X push so this push varies uh, in other words you vary the duty cycle um, uh, for the motor uh, and this in return it it actually changes the motor's speed inherently um, so that in, in itself it controls the frequency so you don't uh, change the frequency uh, directly you change the uh, the duty cycle and that changes the frequency and that is the closed loop method so going back to the bike analogy um, an open loop control would be when you're um, sort of uh, running downhill um, you're you basically you you keeping up your feet on the pedal um, is your bike I can't draw properly but um, with the open loop you basically keep your feet on the pedal just to keep up uh, with the uh, the rotation so uh, you where there you have a you know a, a fixed push 
uh, and a fixed frequency and basically you're trying to keep up with the pedal rotating um, whereas uh, with the closer uh, closed loop that would be if you're trying to uh, go up a hill uh, essentially what you're trying to do is you're pushing it harder and harder and uh, which in effect is bringing up the other feet fast enough uh, essentially changing this frequency uh, and um, therefore the, the push is actually uh, changing the frequency 